I'm here today at the headquarters of Wild Zora, maker of some meat and veggie bars, uh, backpacking meals, and soups, and some other new products we'll be talking about shortly. Join me as I interview Zora and take a tour of the facility. In the heart of downtown Loveland, Colorado exists this family-owned business. I got to have a sit-down chat with Zora to find out what this company is really all about. So we're here today at Wild Zora and I'm talking to Zora of Wild Zora about her company and everything that they do. Hi guys. And thank you so much for having us. I mean, I really appreciate what you're doing for the AIP community. And uh, also thank you for introducing our business and how we can, you know, what we can provide and how we can help. Very glad that you guys are making products that the AIP community can actually eat because otherwise, you know, it's very difficult when you're on AIP or paleo or anything like that to actually be able to purchase things that are compliant. And I mean, if you've been on AIP, you know the struggle. So anything that we can do to support these com uh, companies that are helping us out, it's like, Great. Totally. <laughs> and we didn't even start as an AIP business. We started, we started back in 2014. Actually, in 2012, our family moved from Europe to northern Colorado. We actually live in Fort Collins. And uh, we started to you know, be active and go on hikes and skiing and biking and all of that. And we were eating way too many sweet bars. You know, how many trail mixes can you eat mm -hmm. on a bike, right? mm -hmm. on a bike ride or on a hike? Mm -hmm. So we were eating you know, trail mixes. We were eating way, way too many sweet bars that would have a lot of sugar, dates, grain, soy, and what it would do to me, it would totally spike my blood sugar. So I would go like that energy for about 30 minutes and then uh, coming, you know, crashing down. And to our kids, back then they were, what, they were small, they were six and eight. And for them as well, I would feed them, you know, mom, I'm hungry, I would feed them. And then 30 minutes later, they would come back and they would tell me, mom, I'm hungry again. And I was like, show me the package, 300 calories, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. So at that point, I knew like we need a little more protein in our diet and I started to, I actually got a paleo cookbook as a, uh, as a gift and uh, that's where I kind of found, you know, meat and veggies, that's what we eat anyways every dinner, let's, you know, let's put that together, like, you know, grind the meat and that's, that's how it all started. So total R&D in our house with a dehydrator and an oven and uh, so that's how we started to make the meat and veggie bars and even today you know four years later people are still meat and veggie bars you know isn't it kind of weird so i have to tell them you know think about it as a healthy jerky we don't call it a jer jerky but what it is it's basically sustainably raised meat either grass-fed or free-range or natural lamb and then we put organic veggies with it few dates and apricots as well they're also organic but they help us to naturally bind it and preserve it so we don't have to put any chemicals in it and then so you have a nice protein snack as an alternative you know if you're ready to say no to sugar you have an option that you can have and it's not just like a salty too tough jerky made from conventional meat so it's just another option you know protein snack that you can have and i'm over here smiling because i've had the exact same experience like i used to do iron man triathlons and i would have wow. the gels and everything <laughs> That's what I think caused my autoimmune disease flares to start, but uh, I would have the, the blood sugar mm -hmm. spike where I'd go up yeah. here and then 20 minutes later I'd be starving or shaking or something. Right, and right. then same thing, like when we started hiking, <clears throat> going camping, backpacking and everything with our kids, all of us, we would notice that like yeah, immediately the blood sugar spike and everything. So um, going to a more protein rich kind of source like this has been like the game changer for us. So um, yeah, yeah it's but I have to say I'm personally not into extremes mm -hmm. i like balance in my diet and in my life as well so we don't go keto mm -hmm. because uh, i feel like you know our body is you know consists of protein and carbohydrates and fiber and all of it so i believe that we should eat a little bit of all mm -hmm. and uh obviously unless if you have a you know you're on an aip and you have to eliminate stuff but uh that's what kind of what gets me into the aip how we started with it so back in 2014 that's when we kind of started to make the bars and uh, back in 2015, that's when we started to put it on shelves in a local Northern Colorado grocery stores. And uh, I was doing a totally random demo at a grocery store and three people came during that three hour demo and they came asking me, you know, they came check it out and read the list of very, you know, very carefully read the list of ingredients. And uh, yeah, I had these original bars with grass-fed beef. So one has 
One has Parmesan cheese in it, which is my favorite, but you know, I love cheese. And, uh, and, but some people can't have dairy. And then these two, the chili beef has a lot of cayenne. And this barbecue has a, uh, some tomato and they also have red bell pepper. And I was like, oh, we can't eat. So these ladies at the stores were telling me we can't eat any of it, we can't eat nightshades. And I was like, what is a nightshade? Like, I had no idea what nightshade is. And they were telling me it's so hard for us to find something portable, like all jerky has black pepper. Like, none of it is nightshade free. And we can't travel. We have to be you know, cooking everything at home and the whole traveling, getting from one place to another, not knowing when to eat again and not being able to have a snack with me. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that's, that's kind of hard. And I went back into um, you know, our small production space and I was thinking, I was reading about um, nightshades and I was researching and I was like, oh, how hard would it be to take the nightshades out of a recipe? It's hard. It's hard. And you all know it because you all cook, you know, exactly. a according to the AIP mm -hmm. protocol. But I did it anyways and I made this Mediterranean lamb with organic spinach. And for everything that's, that's AIP, no nightshade, we list every ingredient. We don't even say like spices. We list every one of them so people can be totally 100%, you know, what's in it. They know. And then the other one is an apple pork. Oops, I'm putting it right here. <laughs> so that was the second one I made. Uh, we made it about, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago. A couple of years back, that's a second nightshade free recipe, AIP. And this one even was slightly tougher because I was asked to remove allium. And I was like, what's the allium? Oh, garlic and onion. So all my umami went out of the window. It was like everything that like I can cook with and taste good, like it was out. But so that this one took a long time to research, but it's, it tastes like a German breakfast sausage. Mm -hmm. And that was my intention <laughs> with, uh, with like sage and parsley. So that's um, actually these two are our most popular. And I think part of it is because they are AIP as well. So they're the so, most popular of all of yours? Yes, bars. basically okay. from all the bars, all the seven flavors we have, the, uh, these two AIP are most popular. Let's hear that, the AIP ones are the most popular. Yeah, you guys, you're awesome. <laughs> I mean, seriously, thank you for your support. I had no idea, but I'm so happy that now we can uh, offer something to people that just had it so hard. And, uh, and yes, it is possible. It may take me longer to do R&D on the next AIP product, but it is possible. So, you know, we will keep doing that. Nice. So you have all these wonderful bars. What other products do you have? So in 2000, end of 2017, actually in 2018, we started, we acquired a company called um, uh, Paleo Meals To Go. And those are freeze dried meals for backpacking. Let me show you a few. And we started to make these in 2018. So there are a couple flavors. So both of these, Mountain uh, mountains, uh, Beef Stew, that's AIP as well. And uh, then this one, Summit Savory Chicken. So both of these are AIP. And what they are, they are freeze dried meals. So basically you will find it, you know, either on our website, Amazon, but also places like REI or Sierra Trading Post, like where people go, you know, buy their tent and then I was like, okay, now I need to be fed, mm -hmm. so I need food. So then they get these, basically you open it up, you pour hot water into it, you mix it up and it rehydrates within, depending on an altitude, but you know, five, 10 minutes. And so you have a whole portable meal, but you can also take it, you know, if I'm not a big fan of like, you know, sleeping in a tent, like I like the outdoors, but like if I'm in an RV, I'm happier. So this is a great option as well if you're traveling because you don't have to do any dishes too. And you know, family of four and everybody hungry and Adrian would eat like two of these, our teenage son. So then I have no cleanup, so I love it too. But people even taking, you know, traveling on a plane or going on a long car ride and you never know when you're gonna meet, you know, when you're gonna have a good food again. Mm -hmm. So these are totally great options as well. We have, so these two are totally AIP, no nightshade. Again, all the ingredients are listed, even all the spices are listed, so you can be assured. And uh, another nice thing about these is that, you know, there are a lot of these meals, you know, at REI and places like that, but uh, they're usually, I mean, I have not seen one that's paleo and I have not seen one that does not have conventional meat. And that's like one of the biggest thing here at Wild Zora uh, is like only use 100% grass fed beef or only use free range chicken. None of our meat ever whatsoever would have any growth hormones and antibiotics. And all of these other packages on the markets have conventional meat. How I know it is because 
I was looking to buy freeze-dried meat because freeze-drying that's a whole another production line for us and it's complicated and it's expensive so I was looking into these like there are about three or four freeze-drying companies in this country all of them have huge freeze-drying drums and they all make conventional meat hmm. so that was totally out of the question so we ended up buying freeze-drying machines we're in debt <laughs> But we're paying yeah, it slowly. Very, yeah, we're Val. <laughs> and my husband, he is a co-founder. He like he does all the finances and I just That's ask cool. him for a new machine. <laughs> yeah, honey, soon another one. <laughs> so but we do all our freeze drying. So uh, the meat. We, you know, we uh, cook it, we freeze dry it, so we know it's grass fed or it's free range, and that's very important to me. I actually come from um, Europe, from Czech Republic, and Czech Republic is part of the European Union. For years, European Re Union does not allow uh, growth hormones in beef. That's admirable. And yeah. I don't understand why this is still possible in US. I understand why we do it, right? Mm. We put growth hormone in a cow, it grows bigger, bigger yield, bigger profits. But I think it's all wrong because whatever you put into the cow, you're eating later. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, support local only uh, ranchers that are in U.S. We don't buy, you know, Australian, New Zealand or uh, Argentinian beef. We support local ranchers. Usually there are co-ops of multiple, you know, grass-fed free-range ra ranchers. And that's, that's sort of our business model. Nice. I also want to mention... These are great for if you have uh, like if you have an office and you need to have something in your desk drawer to have as an emergency. Um, freeze dried meals, awesome. Yeah, that's a quick pickup. We also have some of them are these are we have few breakfast meals. So these are not AIP because they have nuts and they have uh, uh, what is it the nuts and also probably flaxseed. I don't know if. Flex seed. Yeah, it's not AIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are, we call them paleo porridge. So these are mm. your breakfast meal, you know, like paleo, again, not AIP, but paleo people can eat them. And these are super great for, uh, you know, I usually keep one in my drawer, you know, I kind of have a stash. But uh, but if I skip breakfast and I really, I cannot skip meals because my gut sugar oh, just like goes mind. crazy mm -hmm. and I, you know, don't have energy. So I would, you know, quickly make this at work and, you know, just be set for the whole morning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and one more thing we started to make actually, uh, what's now, 2019, so this year we started to make uh, instant uh, paleo soups. And we have three flavors, one of them is AIP, it's, just, uh, it's the lemon chicken soup, and again, everything is listed here. So this was, um, yeah, I have to share this with you. Uh, <laughs> So we're, we're a small business and we started four years ago and this is how sophisticated our market research is. I come home after a whole day in, you know, in production and whatnot and our daughter who is today 14 asks me, mom, I really like soups. Can you make me soups I can just take to schools? And I was like, you know, five second thinking, oh yeah, sure, I can make soups. So now we make soups. <laughs> Yeah, I think we will have to get a little more sophisticated, uh -huh. but they actually sell very well. <laughs> but think about it as a little warm snack. I mean, this is not a whole meal. Mm -hmm. You know, this has 50, 60 calories. So basically it's more like a warm beverage. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in the afternoon in the office or traveling somewhere and you don't want another fifth cup of coffee and it's kind of fall or it's kind of cold, you know, just put it in your cup, pour hot water over it. Within 30 seconds, you have a nice savory, brothy like beverage. So again, we do the, uh, meat in-house so it's all free-range or grass-fed beef and then we put organic veggies with it so this is a nice little snack as well portable as well and that probably could work uh, a lot of times i have leftover proteins from dinner oh and yeah then i need a side because i don't yep. have a side so yep. that could be yeah. a, a quick side totally yeah. or our daughter she uh you know she likes her rice or noodles or whatever mm -hmm. Uh, so we're not 100% paleo in the household. I mean, some like my husband is because he kind of has to be, but kids are not fully. So if she has leftover rice or some noodles or something, you know, she puts it in a cup as well. And then, mm. you know, for her, it turns, you know, she's small. Right. So for her, it turns into an afternoon, yeah. you know, good quality snack. Yeah. But do you have any new products in the works that you can share with us? We have a bunch of new production lines. Uh, so the next one coming out, I would say within two months, uh, we will have uh, single serving packages of organic air dried fruits. 
and so it's a nice quick snack if you want you know next to your meat bar you can also have the fruit and uh, so all of them are gonna be organic and usually you buy uh, I noticed at least in the stores you buy organic fruit or air-dried fruit kind of in bulk you know mm -hmm. you have to buy a lot of apples and a lot of stuff and a lot of dates and a lot of apricots and so what we did we took uh, we are mixing three different flavors into one package like we have kind of an interesting combination. So we have organic uh, air-dried orange, which is nice. You can just eat it even with the peel because it's organic or you can just put it into a cup of water and it will flavor it. Mm -hmm. Then we're putting also, we're mixing it with figs and apricots. So it's going to be more kind of an interesting combination. So you're not eating, you know, just eating one kind. Like if now I'm sick of the bananas, but you will have three in every package. And all the fruits are going to be AIP, so they're going to be, you know, totally doable for you guys. And uh, yeah, and I, as I said, I think within six weeks to two months, they will finally be out. And we're just waiting for the packaging to get to us from the printer and then we will start making it. Nice. So another uh, cool product that we're going to be making is that these uh, paleo porridges are great to take with you, like you're, you know, outdoor and you need, I mean, this has 520 calories. So you're, you must be on a really long walk because when I'm in the office, I have a hard time to eat this. So what we are working on are single serving, like a paleo granola, paleo porridge, mm. which is gonna have uh, some fruit, some um, you know flax seed, some nuts and some coconut as well. And you just use it as a, you know, like these soups, you have a single serving and you put it in a, in a cup, pour hot water over it. You can put your own fresh uh, fruit that you have at home and you can have a very quick paleo breakfast that way. Because I have seen some of those, um, what is it called, like oat packages and mm -hmm. stuff and I think it's criminal what's in it. Okay. I mean, yes, oats, if you're not, if you're okay with grains, the, you know, they're gluten-free, that's fine. But I have seen some just really cheap sugars. I have seen really cheap, like fruit-like, coated with color number 40 red or whatever and i was like this is mm -hmm. criminal to feed to your kids mm -hmm. i mean kids are our future mm -hmm. so it's just maybe i got a little too obsessed after i had them but but i really think that they're our future so i will do anything to feed them well mm -hmm. so so that's why we're making something like that but in a you know single serve and much smaller package so you just have it at home or your kids can have it as a and make it themselves as well they love to have the independence when they can just like be cool and make their own breakfast so that's what we're working on, and I think that's gonna be maybe within the next half a year. Oh, nice. Yes, my nine-year-old lately, that's his thing, is making his own breakfast. So. Yeah. And doesn't he feel like so empowered oh, and like, totally. well, mom, I can take care of myself. I can't get him out of bed other days, but that day he pops out of bed and runs downstairs the days he awesome. can do that. Awesome, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Where can we find the Wild Zora products? So you can buy all products on our website, wildzora.com. If you sign up for our newsletter, you we don't spam you. Like Hannah does a really nice job with newsletters and there's actually some educational stuff as well. And every time you, every, I think every time we send a, a coupon, so for a nice discount. So that's one option to go to. Another option is Amazon. And then we're in uh, several stores like uh, The Lamb and Barbecue Bar are in uh, now Walmart. Walmart's picked, up, picked us up, so we're in about a little over a thousand Walmarts, uh, which is not everywhere. So I would go to our website, to a store locator, to find, you know, which Walmart has them. And then these uh, freeze-dried meals are in um, REI, uh, Sierra Trading Post, um, and also another grocery chain that has uh, the bars is uh, Natural Grocers. So what would you like to share that you would Think is really cool about your company um anything unique that sets you apart from other companies you know? okay so i'm totally gonna brag <laughs> two weeks ago in colorado we won this this heavy break it's an award it's a manufacturing it's colorado manufacture manufacturing award for outstanding food brand 2019 and i know i was like I was totally calling my dad back in check and I was like, dad, like, I used to be a teacher and I used to trade, you know, like stocks and stuff. And, uh, and now I'm doing manufacturing. I really think that's cool. And uh, what was kind of fun and interesting, I thought too, like there were so many other businesses and much bigger businesses next to us on the stage and, you know, in an aerospace making airplane parts and, you know, clean water solutions and like, like really cool businesses. And, um, there were 15 of us getting awards and there were two women picking them up. One of them was a local politician who supports like manufacturing businesses. And then there was me picking it up for, you know, on, you know, for our business. So I just thought, you know, I mean, yes, manufacturing is totally run by men, 
but we can do it. And I was on the stage and my production manager, who is a woman as well, came with me, Melissa. So she was super cool. And another thing is that we, uh, so we have our own manufacturing. We actually, we actually make our food, which is kind of unusual in the food industry yes, yeah. that there are a lot of, they call them co-packers. Uh, so it's a totally different company that will make your food. And basically you turn into marketing and sales company, which I think is like, awfully boring. Sorry to all the marketing people, <laughs> but it's just, it's, I believe that if you make food, you need to be touching it. You can really control quality and mainly you employ people in the local community. So we have now, there's about 20 of us in our small business and most of them are people in uh, production and operations and they're all local from Loveland and nearby. And I think it's really meaningful to be, you know, to be creating jobs instead of sending the job somewhere to East Coast or West Coast to a co-packer. And one more thing is that all our all production team are all women. I just think that it's really cool. It is. And uh, mm -hmm. they actually are empowered to make their own hiring decisions. So yes, I get the resumes and I, with our uh, with Melissa, we you know talk to uh, the people first, but then we uh, offer them paid work interviews, and then it's up to the rest of the team to tell me at the end of the day, is this a yes or do we need to keep looking? So that's kind of I think it's kind of cool. All very <laughs> admirable, I would say. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I would say maybe one more cool thing is that uh, we are a um, business that's uh, woman owned, and. Um, Yes, I started it and my husband joined me in about a year later. So we're family run as well. And uh, we're here for the long term. Like we're not funded, we're funded with profits. We don't have any venture capitalists behind us, you know, giving us cash and also telling us burn the cash so we can sell you in five to seven years to get our profits back. So we're, you know, we're in the community for long term. People keep asking us, you know, like, what's your exit strategy? And I was like, exit strategy, we just started, but let me think about it, maybe six feet under. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I like, I like to have a purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, being in between jobs or work or businesses, I just don't know what to do with myself. And that's a frustrating place to be. So I really like to have a purpose, you know, know, get up every morning and know what I'm doing. And um, yeah, and maybe, you know, in 20 years when maybe our kids want to take over or when I get tired and <laughs> then maybe we, we rethink it. But for now we're, you know, family run business, local business, employing local people. And, you know, we're going to be here for a long time making good quality food. That's so refreshing to hear like in this day and age, because like you said, so many companies, you get so invested in them and you're like, I love their product. And, and then, then they get sold. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah. it's tough. It, it is very tough not to be funded because you're, and especially having the manufacturing part as well, because usually business decides, okay, I have this number of money. That's all what I have. And then do I put it into sales and marketing and do, or do I put it into manufacturing and to grow both parts is, you know, uh, intense cash intense. And, um, Yes, and I would say also the media doesn't do a great job because all what they write about is this, you know, this company sold in four to six years for X number of millions. Nobody talks about the boring, profitable family businesses mm -hmm. I, that have been around for a third generation mm -hmm. and they're employing local people, doing good for community. And, uh, you know, they just that's not exciting to the press usually. Not to the press, but to us. Thank you. <laughs> we enjoy that. <laughs> I appreciate Thank you. After the interview, I got to take a little tour of the facilities. And this was the room where they were packing some of the backpacking meals. The freeze-dried components were put into each bag individually. And then once all of the ingredients were in the bags, this machine would seal them up. Next we went into the freeze drying room and this room was filled with freeze drying machines and you would put the food on racks and get them freeze dried in here. And then we went into the bar room where they were packing the bars and these were the lamb, Mediterranean lamb AIP ones being ready to get sealed as well. These were the bars actually being dehydrated in a very large dehydrator. And then the shipping room where all the boxes were waiting to get shipped out to 
locations near you. So I being the professional and skilled interviewer that I am, huh, um, forgot to film a close for this. So I just wanted to say, Thank you to Wild Zora for letting me come up there and have this interview. And to all of you for watching this, um, please support our small businesses like this that are making the products that we can eat. And if you enjoyed this, please let me know below, like comment, hit the like button or whatever, because I'd like to know if I should make more of these and highlight more of these small businesses that are making a difference in our lives. We really do make a difference in these businesses. So if we can support them, it means a lot to them as well. So I will see you all next week.